What's up, nerds, and welcome to another Noisy News Week for the week of March 12th, 2022. Here's where I fill you in on some notable news posted to NoisyPixel.net this past week. Before I get into the news, I know I was sick again. Let me just clear the air. When I'm sick, I'm a huge baby. You can ask Mark. You can ask uh, Spencer. You can ask anybody. They'll tell you that when Azario's sick, he's a little emotional. He needs to be taken care of like a like a little baby a little baby but that's all in the past i got a little sick nothing serious but i was out and down for the count for a couple days but we move on currently i'm playing games that i can't talk about but we have so much coming up the the second half of march is ridiculous so expect a lot of cool coverage from us because we have so much we're looking forward to putting out this month. And thank you for, for watching and hanging out. It, it does mean a lot to us. So how about we just talk about what you're playing in the comments below and I'll be there and uh, we'll have a discussion. With that said, on to the news. Sony had a state of play event focused on Japanese developers and publishers. They announced some cool stuff. Capcom came out the door with a not Dino Crisis game called Exo Primal. It's coming to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, and PC in 2023. It seems like a hero shooter where dinos come out of nowhere, but I think it's more focused on like multiplayer. So you have like four characters or three characters and they all do different stuff and then you work together to, to fight the dino hordes. I like dinosaurs, don't like online games, so I probably won't play it, but this looks to me like a perfect extension of the Dino Crisis series. If you've ever played Dino Crisis, it started off as a survival horde dinosaur game and then it evolved into some kind of arcadey shooter. But it's definitely Dino Crisis inspired, so let me know what you think about it. Konami came out and revealed that they will release Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Cowabunga Collection for all consoles and PC. This game is pretty much just showing us that Konami has nothing new to offer, but they're still going to capitalize on when they were great. These games are all really cool titles. It has all the Nintendo games, all the Super Nintendo games, the arcade games, a Game Boy game, it has it all. And I'm hoping for a physical release. Probably, I think they're gonna do it from limited run games, so you can expect that. But I'm excited about it. And then with the new Ninja Turtles game down the line from Dot Emu, I'm pretty stoked for this release. Bandai Namco made a surprise announcement that they will release JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle R on all consoles and PC in early fall 2022. This is a re-release of the PS3 version and it's a pretty expensive game. You can find it for like 150, 160. It's a cool game. It's a fighter. It has cell shaded graphics, so you know it aged well. They're gonna implement some balancing and all 50 DLC costumes are gonna be available in the game. So that's cool. Square Enix decided to have fun with the event and announced two brand new IPs. Valkyrie Elysium, which is a part of the Valkyrie Profile series, and it's nothing like a Valkyrie game that I've seen before, which is cool, but it also retains that, like, double A, almost triple A style of Square Enix games that we saw a lot from Sega on the PS3. You know, your Shining series, you know, you have the dungeons and, and the action. I don't know, I, I kind of like that toned down, not so epic and grandiose freaking graphics. You know, it's just, it's just right there. It's niche enough. And I really like the Valkyrie series. It's dark, it's fun, and the characters are all kind of cute. So I'm in. Let me know if you've seen the trailer and what you think about it. The developer also announced a not Final Fantasy Tactics, the Dio Field Chronicle, coming to all consoles and PC in 2022. It looks a lot like the mobile game War of the Visions, but for consoles, you strategize and it's, it's on a grid, but it's real time tactics. So you're constantly moving your players and using skills. There's no turns. It's really interesting. I'm excited to know more. The story looks so cool. The music, oh my God. Just watch the trailer and you'll know they're also doing English audio for it, which is rad. I'm looking forward to learning more about this. All I know is that it's a better name than Triangle Strategy, even though Dio Field is still, still a pretty strange name. That's all I wanted to cover for the Sony event, so on to some news. Nintendo decided to delay Advanced Wars 1 Plus 2 reboot camp because of real world events. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of crazy crap going on in this world right now, but uh, Nintendo was like, hey, maybe a war game isn't so good. I can wait, I can wait. We can all wait. 
Just let's just chill. There's some people that are like a uh, delay game. Uh, I mean, it's not bad for us. We're all safe, but there is stuff coming on and there's enough games to play right now. You know, we can we can all just find a middle ground and just be like, OK, cool. Save 60 bucks for this month. I'm, I'll, I'll play it later. Fine. Sega announced that the four chapter DLC expansion Lost Judgment, the Kaito Files, will be available on March 28th. It also comes in the Ultimate Edition, but you can buy it for like 30 bucks, which is kind of expensive. However, this DLC takes place after the events of Lost Judgment, so if you haven't played the game, play it first and then buy it. You don't have to buy it now. Wait for a sale. I don't know if DLC ever goes on sale. I'm pretty sure it does. I don't buy very much DLC, unless it's bathing suits. Then count me in Kaito bathing suit purchased. Forever in Entertainment announced that the House of the Dead remake will launch on Nintendo Switch April 7th, 2022. Yeah, this game doesn't look good, but it's a re-release of the 1997 game with updated graphics and controls and like end game stuff. But the trailer is really flashy and goes really fast, but it looks terrible. Like just slow down. I know it looks cool because we're all like, oh blood, look at all of the, yeah, I know. I remember that part. I remember that part, but it looks terrible. I'm just gonna come out and say it. Prove me wrong, Forever Entertainment. Prove me wrong. NIS America announced that they will release Disgaea 6 complete on PS4 and PS5 and PC on June 28th. They released a new trailer showing all the stuff and all the complete stuff. You got all the DLC. I don't know why this game took so long to come out in the West on PS4, but hey, it's the first Disgaea on PS5. I'll take it. Arc System Works released the rollback netcode update for Blaze Blue Central Fiction on PC. The game can now be played the way everyone wants to play it, maybe it'll breathe some new light into this anime fighter. Central Fiction is a really good game. So if you have it and you want to play online for a few rounds, do it. By all means, it's there for you. KiwiWorks released a new trailer for Witch Spring R, a remake of the original Witch Spring, which launched for mobile devices. The game is currently in development. It hasn't released any consoles, but it is coming to PC and other platforms. The trailer goes over some of the environments and character interactions. It looks pretty good. It looks a lot better than that other one that we got. I don't I remember the name. It's Witch Spring something, but cool. I'm into it. Warner Brothers announced that Gotham Knights will be released on October 25th for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X, and PC. So this game looks good. It's a lot like the, the Lord of the Rings games that they released. So I'm kind of eager to see what they've done with it with the delays and stuff. But regardless, it looks rad. And I'm hoping that the story holds up because I'm, I'm going to be playing mostly for that. On to visual novel news, Spike Chunsoft announced that they will be the ones to publish Chaos Head Noah and Chaos Child in the West on Nintendo Switch. The game will release on October 7th, 2022, and there is a double pack available with both games on the cartridge with all the English and text that you want. The game will have a steelbook for the physical release, along with the lingerie costumes. They did announce that one girl would not be released in the West for her lingerie costumes, and I'm not sure why. Maybe an age thing? I don't know. All those characters look young, so I don't... <laughs> Froming announced that they will release Hatsumita from the future Undying on PC via Steam in the West in spring 2022. This game came out in like 2016. There is an 18 plus version available, but I don't know if that version's coming West. The Steam release does say that partial nudity is there. It is also a gory game too. So there's a lot of moving parts, but it looks great. This game is made by the developers and writers and artists who worked on Grisai, so expect some, some of those themes and tones in this game. Japanese developer Intergram announced that they will be working on a dungeon-based RPG visual novel style anime freaking game for Kanutsuba. God's blessing on this wonderful world. The game is in development for consoles, so expect more. There's not much going on, but hey, it's announcement. That's cool. Sky Project announced that 99 new episode will launch on PC on March 18th, 2022. This is a Fandis style with more girls and it kind of caps off the story of one of the endings and the game's great. If you haven't played the 99 series, do play it because it is really cool and you can jump in at any point, but I do suggest playing it through from the first one to the third one or fourth one. Fifth one? All of them are great. All of them are great. Regardless, publisher Nekonyan announced that they will release Cafe Stella and the Reaper's Butterfly on March 25th, 2022. This is based in the Senron Banka series universe, and it follows this guy who dies, and then he has this Groundhog Day effect. So he just relives the same day over and over again. It's cool. Developed by Yuzusoft. I'm in. Imel announced that they will publish the Rosetta developed 
Yuri visual novel Secret Kiss in the Sweet and Tender on Nintendo Switch and PC. The game is available now. You can get on Manga Gamer if you want the 18 plus version, but the Nintendo Switch version is the all ages version. Now onto previews. We have Relayer and Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Reviews on the site, we have Cyberpunk 2077 on PS5 and Series X. We have Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster, Assassin's Creed Dawn of Ragnarok, Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, WWE 2K22, and Potato Flowers in Full Bloom. And guys, that's it. That's the news. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great week. Have a great day. See you soon.